This is a photograph by Henri Cartier-Bresson, who's a French photographer, and he's known as the father of, or, you know, one of the prime examples of street photography and also photojournalism. This was done in um, 1932, and this is a very, this is the very beginning of his career. So he, he worked for several decades, beginning in the 1930s. I see. So what makes this photograph so special? Well, it does look just like a snapshot, but this is really the beginning of what we know to be snapshot photography. So we're kind of used to images that look like this, but back in 1932, this looked really new. In what way? Right. It looked new because, well, first of all, they have a figure who's leaping, and he's really frozen. So there's this pregnant moment below his heel and you know above the uh, reflection where if you know just one second later of course he would disturb that whole reflection and was this possible because of new technology for him to capture this yeah he's using a, a camera that's recently come to the market called the Leica it's a 35 millimeter camera so it's a you know it's a handheld really mobile camera that he and other journalists photojournalists will like to use it allows him to capture you know with a split second shutter speed this particular image. So where are we here? What are we looking at? We're in Paris. The image title is the Place de l'Europe, and it's behind a train station called the Gare Saint-Lazare. It's an odd place. You seem to be pretty high up because you can see the rooftops in the background, and things are fenced. It seems to be zoned off, but you're not really sure why it's zoned off. No. You know, it seems an odd space. And is that puddle of water there that reflection is in? Yeah, it's a, it's a slightly flooded area. There's construction going on. When he described how he shot this, he said that he was passing by a little construction area and there was a temporary fence with wooden slats and he just stuck the lens through as best he could and happened to see this. So we can see that all over the city all the time, those temporary construction sites with little holes to right. look in and things. That when he's looking at his contact sheets after he's printed these out on a preliminary basis, he would be drawn to this particular exposure um, because of certain formal things, probably. He's, he likes geometry, and so there's a lot of that in this image. There's a lot of matching of geometric form, um, such as, of course, the reflection of this man's leap. The fence and also the, being reflected. Exactly, the fence repeating. Um, there are the rooftops, which are kind of stabilizing forms. So you have movement, but then you also have stability. I mean, this is something, you know, you get in the Renaissance, in the High Renaissance. They love this kind of thing. Right. And then also there are arcing forms in the foreground. Repeated in the background, notice there are advertisements. So this is, you know, totally urban uh, environment. It's kind of a gritty urban environment. Very. And there appears to be an ad for maybe some sort of a circus where you have leaping figures, just like in the foreground, in reality. Wow. You know? So it's like um, life mirrors art or advertising. So it's like this balance between <laughs> movement and very stabilizing forms at the same time. Exactly. And there's also the idea of replication and reflection, uh, which is something that photography, of course, is very much about, and that modernists in general right. know, love to um, to construct their works of art around. Are other photographs that he did similar to this? They are. They are. It, again, with the geometry um, and people who reflect structures, and generally he's drawn to the working class. Um, he's it's kind of marginal in, areas of the city? Marginal areas, ruined zones, you know but there's always a lot of life and vitality in there.